Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up remote Panasonic extensions, or as Panasonic calls it, remote workers. So there are three scenarios. On the NS1000 only, using the built-in WAN port, you can use the router feature and the VPN feature. Just note that an activation key is required for both router and VPN features. Second scenario is on the NS1000, again using the WAN port but only using the router feature. This also requires an activation key. The third scenario, the most common scenario, is using the LAN port on the NS700 and NS1000. This third scenario is what we'll be going through in this video. Before we get started, there's some information that you need. So you'll need the local public IP address, which you can just Google. You'll also need the phone system's LAN IP address and DSP card IP address. Now this next bit's very important, you'll also need some port forwards on the local router. And by local router, I mean wherever the NS700 or the NS1000 is installed. These are the port forwards that you need. Now in this video, I'll be assuming that you only have one DSP card in the phone system. So UDP ports 9300 and 2727 get forwarded to the CPU IP address. Now the whole range of 16000 to 16511 UDP get forwarded to the phone system's DSP IP address. Now if you're having audio issues after everything's set up, it's most likely that 16,000 block. So you'll need to get your IT dude to confirm that those ports are all forwarding and they're set to UDP. So now in the off chance that you have a large DSP card or more than one DSP card, these are the extra port forwards that you need to do. If you've only got a small to medium DSP card, then you don't need to do these extra port forwards. Now in this video, I won't be going through how to do the port forwards on the router. There's just too many different types. If there are enough requests to do port forward tutorials on certain routers, then I may do one. Otherwise, at this stage, I'll be assuming that you're doing the port forwards or you're getting the IT person to do the port forwards. All right, hopefully I didn't bore you too much with everything we needed to get started. If you found it valuable, smash that like button and let's get started. So log into your phone system with installer level access. So first we'll check the LAN IP address of the phone system. So these are the IP addresses that you would have given your IT guy to do the port forwards to. The first IP address is the CPU IP address with 15.101. Now the IP addresses I have on this system are just example IP addresses, they're not the default ones. So if you scroll down you'll see the IP addresses for the DSP card. I've only got a medium DSP card in this system, so you can only see one IP address. If this was an NS1000, you can see four IP addresses in there because that can have a second DSP card installed. Alright, so now we'll go back up to PBX configuration and slot. Then we head over to System Property and Site. Once it loads, click on the Port Number tab at the top. So in here you confirm all the system ports, and these are all set to default. So the most important ports you need to worry about right now are 9300 and 2727. Just keep in mind if you do change these ports, it does require a system reboot. Alright, so now the next up is Media Relay. Up the top under NAT External IP Address, you enter the public IP address of where the system is held. If you're just using the default ports, then that's pretty much all you need to do and then you've got to reboot the system. If you have changed the default ports, like 2727 to another port, just make sure you update it in the relevant spaces there. Remember, any changes made on this page has to have a system reboot done afterwards. I usually complete all the programming and then I do the reboot. Save the changes and then we'll head over to the virtual cabinet. Now that you're in the virtual cabinet area, before we go into the IP extension port properties, I'll take you over to the SIP gateway shelf properties. This is where you can see the RTP network ports and where you can change them when you need to. Depending on what firmware you have, you'll have to hit the NAT traversal tab at the top. Now these ports are shared by the SIP trunks and the IP phones. Alright, so I'll hit cancel out of that. 
and we'll go back to slot. Now you have two options to get to the IP extension port properties. You can either hover over the card and click on port property, or you can go up the top and click on IP phone registration and click on IPPT. Once you're in, up the top under extension number, search for the extensions that are going to be remote. So in this case, it's going to be 2222. From here, you can give the extension a name. After you've named it, don't forget to go up the top to the location tab. And then on the right hand side, under phone location, set it to remote plus local. I find that this is a very common feature that people forget to set. If you find that your remote handsets don't have any audio, the first thing to do is check if this feature is activated. If it is activated, then most likely it's the router and the port forwards. If it's not, then just enable it and it most likely will work. We're now back at the main tab. One way to register the handset is to click on fault under the connection column and click on OUS or out of service. Then under the MAC address column, you can enter the MAC address of the phone. Or you can hit register up the top. Sorry, I just got to repopulate this. Then put the port back in service, INS. All right, once we've got all that configured, the next thing to do is to give the system a reboot. Because if we remember under slot, system property and site, down the bottom there, it tells you that a system reboot is required for the changes to take effect. Also look at the IP terminal registration mode. I always have my system set to manual, just adds a bit more security because I don't want people registering to my system automatically. Just don't try and get the remote handsets working because they just won't work without a reboot. To reboot the system, at the top right, hit the hammer. And while you're waiting, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps me out. Once that loads, click on system control, then system reset. If you're doing this remotely, just make sure you don't hit system shutdown just like I have once, because you'll have a hard time getting it back on. Click on backup. Then after the system backs up, it'll ask you, are you sure if you want to reset the system twice? Just hit OK, OK, and the system will reboot. Click on OK, OK again. It'll log you out, now it's rebooting. It'll take about three to four minutes for the system to reboot. Refresh the page and log back in. Once you're back in, go to PBX config, then slot. Then up the top, click on IP phone registration, then IPPT. Once you're back in here, up the top, click on registration, and you should be able to see your spare extension that you need to register. So select it and move it over to the right column. Then click on next. This is just a little guide on how to use this registration wizard. So if you have more than one extension, it tells you to connect the first one and then connect the second one and so on. I've already pre-configured a handset. I'm just waiting for it to fire up. Now I configured it with the public IP of where the system is because it's going to be a remote handset. Once you see a green tick on the screen, that means it was successful. You should be able to see the time and date on the handset. You can hit close. Now that the handset is registered, if we search for it up here, you'll be able to see under the MAC address column that the MAC address is populated. And under the status column, you'll be able to see that it says registered. Now the connection column now says OUS. So meaning you can put the port out of service if you no longer need it. You can also put the port out of service to change the MAC address if you need to change handsets as well. 
Now remember under the location tab you need to make sure that phone location is set to remote plus local. I repeat this because it's a very common thing that people miss. All right, now that that's all done, we click on the floppy disk up the top to save all our data. While that's saving, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching, I hope this video was useful. Don't forget that I will be making another video based on configuring the handset for remote access. Thanks for watching again, take care.